Welcome to Blade of Tech Musings, the channel dedicated to retro tech, innovation, science, and technological entertainment. In somewhat of a surprise announcement, Virgin Orbit, the new satellite launching subsidiary of Virgin Galactic, notified the press that the first test space flight of the Launcher 1 lift vehicle is expected to occur later this month. The announcement comes just one month after Virgin Orbit's government contracting unit, Vox Space, won a three-launch contract from the U.S. Space Force for $35 million. It was the Space Force's first significant launch award since its December inception, although not by any means its largest. The Space Force had earlier awarded over $1 billion in contracts for ground systems communications related work, previously administered by the Air Force Space Command. The Launcher 1 rocket is designed to lift up to 660 pounds of cargo to low Earth orbit. The vehicle is limited to microsat lift duty, unlike SpaceX's and the United Launch Alliance's rockets, which can lift one to two orders of magnitude more in freight depending on the orbit height required. Nevertheless, a single Virgin Orbit launch is listed at $12 million, significantly less than the $50 million to $100 million price of its other U.S. competitors. Of course, in terms of dollars per pound, SpaceX and the ULA are significantly cheaper than Virgin. In addition, as one viewer pointed out after seeing our earlier episode on Virgin Orbit, New Zealand American company Rocket Lab offers LOE launches for microsats at a cost of $5 to $6 million and Rocket Lab's Electron rocket is already operational, unlike Virgin Orbit's Launcher 1. We took a look at Virgin Orbit and Vox Space in Episode 9, the link to which can be found below. Why does Virgin Orbit's rocket technology remain a viable commercial alternative in today's highly competitive space launch industry? And what is the significance of the Launcher 1 test space flight? Let us see if we can find out. Virgin Galactic's owner Richard Branson's frustration with his spaceflight venture finally bubbled over in 2017 when he decided to double down on his investment and introduce satellite launch services in addition to his venture, focusing on near space tourism. It seemed like a logical step as Virgin had acquired a significant amount of technological expertise in aircraft launch space frames with its Spaceship 2 escapades. Surely it would be easier to strap a rocket under the wing of a carrier aircraft than a manned spacecraft. Three years of development finally came to a head on April 12th of 2020, when Virgin Orbit conducted a dry run of its carrier plane launch pattern off of San Nicolas Island, California. The modified 747 went into a 25 degree climb in simulation of a launch of the Launcher 1 rocket at 35,000 feet. In a real launch, the Launcher 1 would separate from the carrier and subsequently light its Newton 3 engine, producing 74,000 pounds of thrust to push the 70-foot, 30-ton rocket into eventual orbit. Virgin was careful to downplay expectations of the upcoming Launcher 1 spaceflight. The rocket was expected to reach space, but not to necessarily the orbit required for commercial launches. The rocket will contain a payload, but the company has not released details about that payload. And finally, there will be no live video feed of the launch after separation, unlike the fully broadcast launches of competitor SpaceX. The company is hedging its bets by promising clips of the launch later on social media. Why, with a sufficient number of space-proven options already available, would Virgin Orbit's Launcher 1 attract any interest, never mind financial investment, in alternative rocket launch technology? The company's pitch, in short, is launch availability. Virgin believes that there is more demand for microsat launch services than there is a supply of launch dates. Despite the rockets available from SpaceX, the ULA, Northrop Grumman, Ariana Space, former Soviet companies, and smaller competitors like Rocket 1, Virgin Orbit believes there is still room for more. Our planet is changing, and so are the ways we explore it, connect it, inspire it, and protect it. The satellites we build to serve humanity from space are growing smaller and less expensive. 
and that's made the list of satellite builders larger and more diverse. New investment has flooded into the satellite world, and new talent, new inspiration, and new applications as well. But the greatest satellites in the world can't help anyone when they're stuck here on planet Earth. Lacking an affordable, flexible, and responsive ride to space, many small satellites would never get off the ground. But that's all about to change. For four years now, Virgin Orbit has been designing, building, and testing a totally new way of launching satellites. A launch service that is best matched to these new, smaller, and more affordable satellites. Virgin Orbit has built a system that can launch on short notice, flying from wherever needed to reach whatever orbit the mission requires. It's a system built on one of the most powerful, proven aircraft of all time, which serves as a flying launch pad, helping deliver precious cargo exactly where it needs to go, exactly when it needs to get there. It's a system that marries tried and true rocket technology with state-of-the-art manufacturing capabilities. All put together by a team with a bold vision, just the right industry experience and a little bit of a maverick spirit. The small satellites carried by Launcher One will help us better understand and care for our planet and our part of the solar system. Connecting us with others across the globe, growing economies, and keeping us safe. Dozens of satellites have already booked their flights on Launcher One, and with an exhaustive testing program nearly complete, Virgin Orbit is poised to launch the small satellite revolution. The environmentalist message of Virgin Orbit's pitch is warm and fuzzy, but are there really enough launches to go around? Satellite launch service is a cramped $3 billion market on an annual basis. The Virgin Group's own revenues exceed $20 billion a year. In short, Virgin Orbit says yes. The company believes satellite launch annual revenues will grow to capture the customers currently not being served. In effect, the $3 billion a year industry will become a $4 billion a year industry with the efforts of companies like Virgin Orbit. Does Virgin's pitch seem like hopeless optimism? Well, consider this. The company intends on offering interplanetary space probe missions in addition to low Earth orbit satellite missions. That's right microspace probes to be launched towards the Moon and Mars. At Virgin Orbit, we believe in the power of small satellites, and we know that so much of that comes from their ability to conduct different kinds of missions in different kinds of orbits, making our activities in space more affordable and more varied. It's why we've worked so hard to make the most flexible launch system in the world. Every day, we are astounded by the incredible missions small sats innovators dream up. Brilliant engineers and scientists from around the world keep pushing the horizon for small satellites further. So, we've decided to expand our horizon as well. Using our Launcher One vehicle and a highly energetic third stage, we can launch your small sats to the moon, Mars, Venus, asteroids, or beyond. Introducing the Virgin Interplanetary Service, because small sats aren't just for LEO anymore. How interplanetary space probe missions are going to be achieved by a 30-ton rocket and a 660-pound payload remains to be seen. Nevertheless, one can see how commercial interest in a service currently only available from NASA, the ESA, and Roscosmos, and that only on a very limited and expensive basis, would be extremely attractive. What do you think of Virgin Galactic and Virgin Orbit and its impact on commercial space development? Is the interest in their technology justified? Share with us by dropping a comment below. We hope you enjoyed this briefing on the upcoming Launcher One test spaceflight. If so, click that like button. Clicking the subscribe button and notification bell icon will also help you stay informed when new episodes are released. As an aside, we would like to thank our subscribers for helping us recently reach the 1,000 subscriber milestone. This is an important step in our channel's success, and we are extremely grateful to those viewers who chose to keep abreast of our new releases. If you haven't already subscribed, again, please take a moment to do so. 
links to previous space industry related episodes, and how other content can be found below. Stay connected by occasionally checking our Instagram feed, where we post content from our upcoming episodes and from episodes past that you may have missed. Make sure you follow our Twitter account, where all new episodes are announced. And finally, join us on our Facebook page, where we cover current news and events related to channel content. Thanks for watching.